Ronda Rousey blasts dismally shallow WWE women's division. Plus, Vince McMahon makes a late Raw change. And there were multiple shock NXT returns last night. It's all in the wrestling news right now. One half of the WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, Ronda Rousey, has had a go at the women's division. Uh, nothing to do with the participants involved, or more so the, the lack thereof, I yes. think. This comes so shortly after she just became a champion once again yes. in WWE. She's one half now of the Women's Tag Team Champions alongside Shayna Baszler, but she spoke to the New York Post about the lack of legit competition in WWE and said, we want to be the most active champions out there. I want to be able to defend this title every week and even twice a week on both Raw and SmackDown. But with how dismally shallow the women's division is right now, there's not enough women around here to keep us busy for a month. And so that's the biggest challenge that we have is to get this company to actually care and invest into the the tag the women's tag division. Ronda Rousey said that in the time that she was away, there was a major drop off in the uh, amount of people in the division. She said it was like the entire women's division just got stripped clean. And now we are the women that are left trying to piece it together. A tag division with around 10 women or even less on each roster. We're trying the best we can to make chicken SH1T into chicken salad. And we made some amazing chicken salad on Raw. <laughs> yes. Now, on one on one hand, I think she's got a point. The, the tag division is quite shallow. Um, but on the other hand, I think these comments, because Ronda's got a certain uncompromising way of talking sometimes, mm. as many wrestlers do, it's not just her. But I think these comments could be possibly taken badly by some of her peers in WWE because it sounds like she's going, you're all crap, when really she's saying there's not <laughs> yeah. enough of you. That's really key to remember. Like This isn't a knock on the talent that is there. It's more just the lack of of competitors right. that are there, and I, I agree. I think this has been an issue with the women's with the women's tag team division, especially mm. for the longest of times, where you just simply haven't. Whilst the idea oh. of having the women's tag team division is a really strong one, and when good, it's great. Yeah, but there just isn't the the bodies to warrant it sometimes. Me and Ross were talking about this on the last news video and I was saying, what about the witches from NXT? And then I was corrected on uh, on Twitter by someone who said, oh wait, Isla, Isla Dawn is a witch, but Alba Fire is a dragon. I was like, oh, thank you very much. You know who it was who sent it as well. Should, I, should be watching it now. Oh, really? You might know, yeah. You oh, might know. Well, You've announced her to the ring before. Oh, uh, that, that narrows it down. Do you, a, do you know? Not that, a clue. Oh, well, I'll tell you after. <laughs> Not a clue. But what of the witches? Or should NXT? I give her a shout out? I don't know what. It, no, no, there's only one witch. The other one's a dragon. Anyway. <laughs> I was it? just being a silly Billy. If you want a shout out next time, I'll give you. I don't know if you wanted one or. <laughs> It's a wrestler. Anyway, <laughs> I've really messed this up. <laughs> All right. I don't know if she wants it's... to remain anonymous. Carry on. Sorry, Tom. Sorry. No, keep digging. No, no. Dig no, up, it's stupid. <laughs> Next time I go to North, she's just going to... Fine. All right, fine. Keep was... my name out. <laughs> it was Stephanie McMahon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so, so, yeah, so it's it's a... Obviously, when it comes to Isla Dawn uh, and Alba Fire... Mm. What about them? I mean, obviously, they are the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. And, and there's, there's even less of a division. Their champions have been called up. But yeah. still got the belt. It's a weird situation. And I do get Ronda's point to a degree. I really, I do. I but, do. But she said it in a way that maybe could make some of her locker room mates go, I am I? I'm good. <laughs> Saying is exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, let's go to Raw, the night that Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler became the tag champions of a dismally shallow division. Uh, and some changes that were made very last minute that came from the desk of Vincent Kennedy McMahon. According to PW Insider, the AJ Styles addition to Raw this week was a Vince McMahon call. We talked yesterday about the fact that even though Vince hasn't yet shown up again backstage in WWE since he was around WrestleMania time, there is still uh, the possibility of changes made remotely by Vince. And that was, that was we've just had an example of that this week. So apparently this AJ Styles inclusion was Vince's call. Portions of Raw were reconfigured to include AJ appearing in the opening segment and teaming with Seth Rollins at McMahon's request. Peter Burnside also say that pretty much the remainder of the show was the same as originally planned and that it was overall an easy night in terms of creative production and execution for the company. So 
uh, at least it wasn't like rip up the script, Vince wants to make all these changes, but it was quite a substantial change still to a major part of the show. And it was a very last second creative division, PW mm. Insider continues to say. Styles was not originally slated to be at Raw. He'd actually flown oh, home wow. <laughs> upon returning to the US on Sunday. So if you're wondering if they planned all along to blow up the latest brand split, that's a no. Wow. Imagine AJ, bless him, getting home. Oh, what a trip. Can't wait to put my feet up. Oh, just got a phone call coming in. <laughs> Oh, Darling, no. <laughs> Wendy, yeah. I'm off again. Samoa Joe will pop AJ, round. you never stop working. You're like a Mack truck. You'll get run over. <laughs> oh. It's all right, though, because Samoa Joe's going to come round and put the curtains up later. <laughs> There's a call back yes. and a half. It, yeah, I, I think the thing that's upset people is the fact that it's just, let's just honour the draft, the brand split. Let's yeah. honour that for even two weeks. Like, <laughs> just keep them separated. Yeah. Nothing massively was gay. I mean, the idea of them going, hey, they face each other on Saturday and now they're tag team partners. It's a mm. classic uh, booking trope, but I don't think Raw desperately needed it. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'd have preferred, I agree. I'd have preferred he'd had a nice day off instead. Yes, I think he deserved it as well. Yeah. Nice little sarsaparilla, <laughs> put his feet up, you know, watch the sun go down on his home in America. <laughs> Last night on NXT, uh, we had numerous shock returns. Wow. Um, we have a new challenger for Carmelo Hayes in amongst it all. Come on, it's Baron Corbin! Yeah! yeah. Now, about time Baron Corbin got an opportunity oh, of no, the Corbin. But on a serious note, though, Baron Corbin has been, I think, many one of many people's kind of mid-card, undercard highlights of past months doing his whole, like, unlucky loser kind of shtick. He's, it sounds like I'm damning him with faint praise. He's really good at it. He's really good at being a loser. I, mm. Oh, it sounds bad. Um, but now he's turned up in NXT. To, yes, as you say. he'll be a winner! Well, we don't, well, we've seen Dolph Ziggler do it, and he became the champion while well, on the main roster. Uh, Corbin attacked Carmelo Hayes after Hayes had just defended and retained the NXT title against Noam Dar, no pinky, no party. Um, and he then hit Carmelo Hayes with the end of days and held it. Well, he held up the belt, which I think is bad luck. It's bad, it's bad four minutes to hold up the title. When you've not won it. Um, I also don't think they would... I think that this is maybe more of a feud to get Carmelo further, to further establish him as a strong champion because you can't be, you can't be putting the belt on Baron Corbin in 2023. <laughs> or can you? It would work as a heel move, I guess. It very much shows. Like I know, that, I know. Sometimes the the conversation varies on whether NXT is a, th a third brand, a brand that's adjacent to, a mm. brand that's the same level as developmental, developmental or whatever. But but the fact that Baron Corbin has been losing quite drastically since we last saw him, oh, yeah. but could immediately attack and fell Carmelo Hayes, the yeah. NXT champion, shows you where the League One, League Two divide <laughs> is here. Yeah, <laughs> possibly. Know? Although I, I do I do think that sometimes it is a smart move when main roster stars move down to NXT because it can possibly put new eyes on the product. Potentially. Potentially. And he wasn't the only one. He wasn't the only one, no. Uh, Mustafa Ali rocked up in the crowd and then joined commentary for the tag match, which was the Dyad versus Wesley and mm. Tyler Bate. Post-match, Ali stops Gacy from beating up the good guy lads and then holds their hands up. So Ali in the mix on NXT now. Yeah, he's kind of a, um, he's kind of a re reuniting force because recently we've seen Wesley and Tyler Bate break apart because Tyler, mm. <laughs> Tyler went, oh, I fancy you shot at your title. <laughs> and then Wesley yeah. went, and then Wesley was like, <sighs> How dare you? Where's <laughs> my like, belt, man? His whole gimmick's been that he's a fighting champion, and then as soon as his pal goes, I'll fight you for it, he's like, oh, you yeah, are. Oh, I can't Fre believe you've done that. Friendship ended with yeah. Tyler Bates. Yeah. Now friends with Mustafa Ali. Yeah, but Ali seems to be reuniting the boys, um, and I think this also potentially signifies no, maybe not a face turn for Ali, but the continuation of a face turn that we saw happen at Night of Champions. Because mm. all the way in the build-up to that Gunter match, he was doing his cocky, weird, humorous undercard heel gimmick where he's like, I'm really positive, I'm Mr. Ali, I'm better than you. And then he turns up at Night of Champions and he's just a brave underdog babyface taking on Gunter. Mm. And it really worked. And now he seems to be still a good guy here. So I guess he's turned face um, and we'll have to see where it goes. I'm in favor of Mr. Ali appearing wherever because I think he's... I think he's really talented. So as part of the draft, uh, Ali and Corbin were made free agents, which allows them to be wherever they want to be. And I guess for now, they're going to be on NXT. Fair enough. You'd love to see it. Yeah. Um, now, the, not the only um, big shock 
from last night's NXT. The mystery attacker of the women's division there has been revealed. It's not Alexa Bliss, though, because she is oh. pregnant. Hey, congratulations to Alexa Bliss and her husband, Ryan Cabrera, as well, who announced uh, on social media, I believe, yes. that they are expecting their first child. Oh, yes, they announced it on Instagram. Uh, Bliss has been off WWE TV since the early part of the year, and this could well be the reason why. It could very well be. It was a total surprise. We weren't trying at all, uh, Alexa Bliss said to E! News. Uh, she said that uh, they're very excited. He, uh, Ryan Cabrera says he and Alexa Bliss are one million percent surprised and uh, couldn't be more excited. Oh, Good luck to her. Yes, absolutely. Good, Good luck, luck to her. Uh, but it means that Alexa Bliss was not the mystery attacker right. for NXT. That's yeah, the most important part. Let's talk part. about real business yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> forget the whole thing of, of, of happiness and bringing yeah, yeah. new life into the world. <laughs> Boring. Let's talk about wrestling. Uh, who is the mystery Mystery attacker. So last night on NXT, Danny Palmer demanded that the mystery attacker reveal themselves, and she was then jumped by the attacker from behind, who unmasked to reveal that it's Blair Davenport, former, ah! formerly known as B Priestley. Mm. You may know her as. She hasn't been seen in on on WWE TV for a while. Now she's back. Well, it turns out we have been seeing her for a while because she's been the mystery attacker. And it's funny because on the the media call last week, somebody asked about uh, Blair Davenport. And Shawn Michaels was very much like, hey, she's a great talent, and should she ever want to be a part of this? And then she's very welcome to. Oh. And so, the, so we kind of read it as, oh, maybe she's just taking some distance from it. We even talked about it in the news last week. Oh, you got us. Mm. Shawn, you, you still got us. Yes. You lost your smile, but you found a friend in me. Yes. Love your work, um, sir. Apparently, the last time we saw her in NXT was, in fact, that triple threat title match against Mandy Rose and Mako Sadamura. That was the last time we see. Well, well, obviously, we've seen her since then because she's been, she's been walking the around in a hug and, wow. I'm going to get you. Beating up all the people. Great get for the division. Yes. Great get. I think that's a really solid addition to yeah, the yeah. roster there. I think she's really good as Blair Davenport. I think so as well. Um, and a best of luck to her. England. I don't know. Up the England. Uh, up the although, England. Is she part New Zealand -y? Ish. I always say she's English. Yeah, I think she's. <laughs> we, have, we have her as our own, except when she loses. Try to remember her accent. Anyway. <laughs> Hello, I'm Blair Davenport yeah. from off of the wrestling that time. I'm pretty sure that is. I'm sure you'll tell us otherwise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Blair Davenport making a women's roster denser and deeper. <laughs> yes. No, not pathetically shallow anymore. Have that, Rhonda. Aye. We'll have more wrestling news throughout the day at cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.